Hello and welcome. This is the third part of the MUI series. In today's video, we're going to talk about styles. I will show you how to style out MUI components using the latest version of the library. To start off, we are going to create a reusable button component. So go to MUI.com forward slash components forward slash buttons and just copy the import line. Within the source components common, I would normally keep all my reusable components. For now, create common button folder and the file with the same name. Then type in RAFCE um, and it will create a, a functional component for you. Okay, it's looking good. Now paste in the imported button and I think we should look at the dashboard template example to see what we're actually going to achieve. So go back to the MUI.com website. I will just open up the templates link and scroll all the way down to the template that we would like to mimic. When looking at the homepage, you will quickly spot that the common button component can be reused for add user button and web setup button and maybe even go to docs one. As a developer, you will have to deal with creating UIs from designers mockups and it's good to plan your work and if possible create one component that can suit all your needs. We know what buttons are looking like, let's head back to button props page and pick the props that will help us to create a reusable button component. So the first one is the children prop and this is where we are going to keep our text. Our classes in the previous MUI version to override the styles you would use that prop. This isn't the case with the latest version of this library. You should be using SX props as it's quicker when it comes to performance but um, more about it in a second. Let's take the color. I will show you how you could switch the color dynamically using that prop. And remember it's a reusable button so we will define these props later. Then we might want to use disable prop as well as later in the series we will be adding conditions to buttons and for example we would like to have our button unclickable until certain conditions are met. I will just um, scroll through and I think for now we only want to add three more props. First one is the size. You could basically define the size of the button. Uh, second one would be the SX prop uh, which is used for overriding the styles. And the last one would be the variant. As you've seen in the dashboard template, we have contained, outlined and default buttons present in the example. I think the basic version of reusable component is there. We might want to adjust it later, but it's what we need for now. I'm going to import my common button component to authentication page so I can play around with it in there. And also I'm going to define values for props and walk you through overriding MUI styles. As a children prop, I am using text and based on what props we passed early on in our reusable button, I can define it here. So I could change the size or variant of the button. Overriding default MUI styles will be fairly simple. Just add a SX prop that's calling const name button styles and inside of button styles we can add our JSS. I'm going to start small with changing things that will stand out straight away. So um, I'll adjust font size, font weight and background color. You will be able to see the difference immediately. Just quickly save and check if it works in the browser. That's there. But once I hover over the button, it goes back to its former color. That's because it has a rule for hover effect set by default. And you can overwrite that rule by adding hover selector. So just to show you that it actually works, I will just change background color to yellow and voila. Okay, let's style the buttons out accordingly to the dashboard template example that we're trying to follow. I will duplicate the common button component and set different styles for each one of them. And also I'm going to skip the boring part of me adding the JSS. So this is it. I got two buttons styled out. The first part of styles is selecting both of the buttons. Then I'm targeting only the contained button with specific background color and hover effect. And I'm also targeting outline button with the specific font color and bolder color. Oh, and don't mind the second button as it's transparent. So I'll just quickly add the background color to the grid item so you can actually see it. Okay, you already know how to overwrite default styles in your MUI components. It's pretty simple just by using SX prop and adding your custom JSS code in it. What about overriding your components globally? That's where MUI theming comes in handy. You can define the styles globally when your components are repeating. 
And if you wish to override it further, then you should use the SX props. To enable theming in your app, import theme provider to your index.js file and just use it as a wrapper. Now we need to add a file with the global styles. So within source, I will create a file and call it dashboard theme. For now, I will show you what is theming capable of and what you can actually change using that feature. So head back to the MUI theming page and copy the line with create theme import. And we want to paste that uh, import back to our dashboard theme. I will also copy a dummy example and adjust it to our needs. So um, change the const to dashboard theme and add a export to it. Delete unused imports as we are not going to need them and we can head back to the MUI website and see how you can set the styles globally for your components. So go at the top and click on the components link and we're just going to copy and paste this sample piece of code. As you can see from the comments, it already selects the MUI button. To do it right, you'd have to add components object, name of the component, which in this case is MUI button, then style overrides object and the class of the element, which in this case is root, and finally your JSS. We need to define our theme, so go back to index.js and import dashboard theme and call it in theme provider using theme prop. Your styles are plugged in. Now, whatever you decide to add to the dashboard theme will change the styles globally. Note that we are using SX props to override default MUI styles. And if you decide to adjust button even more, it won't work as SX props is using stronger selectors. So in critical scenarios to make sure it works, we would have to add the important flag to dashboard theme, but try to avoid using that flag. By looking at the documentation, we can select variants of the MUI elements. So we can style out only contain to outline buttons, which is going to be really helpful when adding global styles. And again, in this case, this is a great example of SX props being stronger than the theme provider. As you can see, uh, to make it work, we had to add the important flag. MUI also comes in with set of defined colors, so you can set your MUI elements to use predefined values like primary, secondary, or even success, warning, or an error ones. Um, you can look them up in the theming palette, but if you don't like the predefined colors, you can also change them in your own theme and use custom values to set primary or an error colors. Remember that we've added colors props to our common button so we can call them here just to see how they look like and later we're going to change them in our custom theme. Oh, this doesn't look like the primary color and that's because we've got contained selector in use. We just need to get rid of it. Okay, that worked. So you can change your button to use different colors string. If you change it to secondary, I think it will just go purple. It's correct. Okay, we've got a little color introduction behind us. Let's just change custom value for our color. To do that, you would need to add a palette object and nest the color name that you'd like to customize. I will just add a primary and then add the main object and change it to a different value. Okay, you can save the code and go back to your browser. It will change the color of the MUI element. You can change the main object to light or dark or even use them at the same time. Dark and light keys are omitted and the values will be calculated from the main object. But this all can be found in the palette documentation. I just want to show you the ropes with that one. You can even define your own colors and it's just very simple. Again, if you wish to know how, just go to MUI palette docs. The next one is the typography. Font family can be changed easily within the typography property. You would have to add a font family that contains an array of strings with fonts. You can also add self-hosted fonts, but you'd have to make sure it gets compiled when you're building your deploy files, and I'm not going to talk about it. Um, if you wish, you can drop me a comment and I can do a separate video about fonts in the MUI. So just paste the typography property with all the bits in it, save and inspect the font in your browser, and as you can see, they are present in your app now. With fonts, you can also define them further by adding font size key. 
Uh, there's also an example of defining responsiveness rule for the header, which is really cool. Um, there is also an example of automating the responsiveness setup in your fonts. And again, I'm not going to talk about it too much. Otherwise, I would have to spend at least an hour on talking about fonts. But if you are an eager beaver and you would like to know more about the typography, um, just visit muy.com forward slash customization forward slash typography. Next up, we have spacing. This is basically a helper to create consistent spacing between the elements. MUI is using recommended 8 pixel scaling factor by default. So if you set your spacing to 2, it will automatically multiply it by 8. In result, you'll get 16 pixels of space. Here, as an example, I define my spacing in array, which later can be called in a specific component. Multiple use cases and lots of cool stuff can be found. If you wish to know more about spacing, just visit muy.com forward slash customization forward slash spacing. Next one, breakpoints. If you know React, then I'm pretty sure you'd know how to define responsiveness rules in your CSS. MUI has a set of predefined breakpoints and you can use them in various places like in the typography mentioned earlier or just in style overrides, applying breakpoints in certain components or classes. Again, I think this isn't that crucial to talk about it. And if you wish to know more, just visit muicom forward slash customization forward slash breakpoints. Okay, so you know how to apply styles globally using theme and you know how to override styles using SX props. This is the end of part three. If you wish, there's a task for you Try to move the styles from common button SX props over to dashboard template as we are going to use them globally. If you're too lazy, then don't worry, I'll get the repo set up so you can clone it. Um, and I guess I'll share the link in part four of the MUI series. Thanks for watching and see you soon.